Honorary President Joseph Boakai this month announced the formation of a committee to reconstitute the leadership of the Office of War and Economic Crimes Court to pursue justice for victims of the country's civil war. A senior Liberian delegation met with the United Nations yesterday, Tuesday, uh, yesterday, Monday, in New York. Adama Dempster is the lead campaigner for human rights and justice in Liberia and a member of the delegation. He tells me the delegation was well received at the UN. So, by matter of fact, to address the culture of impunity, to establish a war crimes court, which has to do with dealing with violations of human rights and international humanitarian law, a force directly within the international community corridor, or I would say in their hand when it comes to a state party that is moving towards addressing the culture of impunity. So automatically as a state party like Red Fund itself is to present a political will to the international community that indeed we are ready to take up the responsibility to bring a closure to the widespread atrocities that were committed in Liberia. So by virtue of that, this meeting today in New York, which I, I was privileged to share the panel with the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Liberia and the Justice Minister and Attorney General of the Republic of Liberia, was basically to present to the UN Peace Building Commission a convincing proposal why Liberia should be supported, Liberia should be assisted technically, financially to establish a world economic crime score. What was the reception to this uh, presentation that was made? Today, I can tell you that uh, there was so much energy in the room. The reception, the responses from all of the most of the countries that attended the United Kingdom, the United States. We're talking about the EU. We're talking about Germany. We, we, we even coming back to even our own African continent. They all have expressed support for Liberia because this has been long overdue. That um, over 250,000 people died. There have been no accountability. So to address transitional justice process, that is the root cause of the conflict, has to be investigated. It has to be decided so that the country can bring a closure. So positively, the UN response to this, I can say, is in the right direction. There is a political, diplomatic, you know, consent towards helping Liberia to be able to raise the necessary support that we establish the War and Economic Crimes Court. The idea of this War and Economic Crimes Court in Liberia, is this a general consensus or this is being pushed by one group of people who are interested in justice? So I don't want to come up with uh, a full group conclusion, but I would tell you that the atrocities that were committed in Liberia, they are overwhelming. And the fact that uh, this broke the fabric of the country apart and the culture of impunity have dominated the, 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 the lifestyle of Liberia, the advocacy and campaign for the establishment of a war crime school have been decades long. It's just not happening maybe in one or two years. If you go back to the release of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report in 2009, only from the first the phase of Madam Ellen Johnson's self administration coming to President George Weah, this advocacy has resonated. So it's just not a group of people who want to see a war crime score. But this is, this is the advocacy that the Liberian people, victims and survivors of the civil war, have been yearning to see whether there will be any form of accountability reparation that Liberia will move towards when it comes to erasing the echoes of the civil war. So it is not just one group of people, not just civil society, not just the human rights community. The opposition forum for democratic change FDC at Najanangkumbi, led by Patrick Amiliato Boy and Nathan Nandalama Fabi, has denounced the resolutions passed by the FDC Katonga function led by Kiza Besije and Eliasi Rukwagu. The Katonga function broke away from Najanangkumbi on grounds that the latter received money from President Museveni to fund its campaigns during the 2021 general elections. On Monday, members of the Katonga function held a delegate conference after which a number of resolutions were announced. Some of the resolutions included dissolution of the FDC party after both functions failed to resolve their differences. A report by the Katonga function interim president Eria Sirukago revealed that 14 out of 17 sub-regions supported forming a new political party 
were three sublegions Teso, Renzoli, and Achori proposed reconciliation and recommended that delegates endorse the dissolution of FDC and establish a new party. In response, the FDC Najanan Kumbi Secretary General Nanda Ramafavi denounced the resolutions passed by the Katonga function, describing its leaders as masqueraders. Mafavi said that under the law, only FDC Najanan Kumbi is legally registered with the Electoral Commission to represent the FDC party. The Forum for Democratic Change Party is a duly registered party with the Electoral Commission of Uganda as by law required, and the returns of office bearers are duly filed with the Electoral Commission, of which none of the so called officers of the party Katonga function is an office bearer as they claim to be, said Mafavi in a statement. The Katonga Function Delegates Conference was called by the FDC party chairman, Waswa Bidigwa, who under the FDC constitution is the only one mandated to call the delegates conference. Mafabi described the delegates conference as nothing but a meeting of attention seekers. Mafabi said that meetings of the party can only be called by authorized office bearers of the party of which one Mr. Wasawiligwa and Mr. Rukogo areas who have been posturing or masquerading as party chairman and the party president respectively are not. And as such, they are not authorized to call a delegates conference. This alleged party delegate meeting is nothing but a meeting of attention seeking like-minded disgruntled rubble ruses who should be ignored. He added, we urge the public not to be misled by these acts of the theatrics for which Mr. Rokwago Arias, the ringleader, has come to be known anywhere he goes. Mafabi said the party is continuing with its mobilization drive across the country, adding that it is slated to hold its next activities in Jinja on August 24th.